so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers, Anne of Green Gables. L. M. Montgomery wrote those words in the early 1900s, but they are as true today as they were over 100 years ago. There is something magical about this time of the year. Maybe it's the colors, the rich oranges, reds, browns, and yellows that inspire my creativity. Even the creatures that live outdoors seem to be excited about the cooler weather. Mr. Squirrel has been visiting my bird feeder more frequently these past few days. He has the cutest little face and long bushy tail, and I thank him for entertaining the cats so well. You may remember that one of my biggest goals for 2021 was to learn how to knit socks. For whatever reason, that goal seemed like a monumental task. In my mind, sock knitting had become a great big mountain that I was afraid I would never be able to climb. But isn't that the way with us humans? We fear something for ages. This thing grows into a massive monster that we must battle, when in actuality, it's just a simple and utterly enjoyable project. Yes, there are new skills to learn. There are new techniques to challenge us, but in the end, it turns out to be a joy. And then we wonder, why did it take me so long to start? Thankfully, like most fears, once I began working on the project, I realized that it wasn't a big scary monster at all, but a newfound friend that I longed to spend time with. I would like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. I have been a big fan of theirs for quite some time, and I couldn't be happier to be partnering with them. Skillshare is an online community for lifelong learners. You'll find thousands of inspiring classes to learn new skills or deepen your existing passions. The Cozy House Socks class has been the perfect introduction to sock knitting. The well-organized lessons and careful instructions taught me how to knit my very first pair of socks, but it definitely won't be my last. You'll also find hundreds of crochet and knitting classes to choose from, and all of their classes are ad-free. And Skillshare is offering a free trial membership for the first thousand people to click the link in the description box below. I used one of my favorite yarns for this project because I have an enormous amount of this wool blend in my stash, but also because I wanted to learn to knit with this beautiful purplish mushroom color. It has gorgeous flecks of blues and even oranges woven throughout the skein. The name of the color is Petals and its heathered tone gives it a rustic and soft look. Barocco Vintage is one of my very favorite yarns and I was so pleased to be able to knit a pair of socks with it. Because it is a worsted weight yarn, the project worked up rather quickly. I thought I would be able to spend a little more time with this first pair of socks, but they flew off my needles. Maybe they knew how much my feet were looking forward to their comfort. I couldn't wait to use my brand new sock blockers. I purchased them some months ago from Knitography Farm in Norway and hung them on the wall of my craft room with great anticipation of the first time I would be able to use them. Their natural wood finish and geometric cutouts make them a functional and beautiful tool. Blocking is something I greatly enjoy. There's something special about filling a sink full of lukewarm water and adding a cap full of wool wash. Doing things by hand feels almost indulgent these days when so much of my time feels hurried. I actually felt a little jealous of those socks lazily soaking in a bath of lavender bubbles. Although the temperatures aren't cold yet here in North Carolina, we are definitely seeing cooler mornings and evenings. Dusk has been visiting us earlier and earlier, but I don't mind. As I've gotten older, I've learned how to better appreciate each one of the seasons and take advantage of all it has to offer. One of my favorite things about this time of the year are the Halloween decorations, and my historic downtown goes all out for this holiday.
My favorite display is at an old Gothic Victorian home just a couple of miles from my own house. I pass it frequently as I drive back and forth to appointments and shopping. Every day in the month of October, the owner of the home adds more and more of his spooktacular collection to his front yard. Behind the weathered iron fence, he displays antique carriages and glass-sided hearses pulled by skeleton horses. The bony passengers are supposed to be a little spooky, but they look so happy to me perched high on their seats. One actually seems to be tipping his cap in a friendly greeting. Last Sunday, the weather was absolutely perfect, so my husband and I took a drive to our local roadside farmer's market. We first headed inside to see what delicious handmade goodies they had to offer, and we weren't disappointed. My husband chose a simple pound cake, and I scored a decadent blondie. As much as I love delicious desserts, I couldn't help but be in awe of their assortment of pumpkins. I don't think I've ever seen so many different varieties in one place before. There were traditional orange ones in every size, but some of them had stripes and others were full of bumps and warts. They also had pumpkins in colors like white and green and a yellowish brown. Every September, I like to display a few simple autumn decorations around my home. Nothing fancy. They wouldn't make it onto the pages of a magazine or get many likes on an Instagram post, but they are perfect for our family. My favorite types of seasonal decor bring in elements of the outdoors. I have a few pumpkins and pine cones scattered about. I love wreaths, vines, and garlands, but my favorite things are my little squirrels and my ever watchful black crow. In the dark of the evenings, I light a candle or two to bring in the cozy warmth of their flickering flames. My love for animals has grown into something quite extraordinary. It's a powerful force in my life. Maybe it's because my children are all young adults and I crave something small to care for. My pets all seem to enjoy the attention. We recently adopted a new kitten, and as much as we humans love him, Miss Olive, our two-year-old cat, does not. We're working very hard to desensitize Olive to her new little brother, Pickle. One of our favorite activities is taking them both outside on their harnesses. Olive is an old pro and confident patrols all around her yard, making sure everything is in order. Pickle, on the other hand, is an absolute maniac and whizzes around, excited about everything he sees. He wants to take it all in, and it's rather comical and quite endearing. Olive is a regal queen of a cat, and Pickle is definitely her court jester. We're hoping that one day she will grow to enjoy his antics as much as we do. Last week, I received a surprise package in the mail. It came all the way from Louisiana, and imagine my delight when I opened up these two gorgeous project bags. Pia from Mrs. Ginger Handmade sewed them both by hand and sent them to me as a little gift. Pia picks the most whimsical fabrics for her project bags, and I couldn't love them more. The first is on a beautiful blue background with gnomes and toadstools and little falling leaves. It is the perfect bag for autumn projects. The second one is a winter white bag 
just right for those cozy Christmas projects. It is adorned with elves and snowmen and tiny winter bunnies. Pia is also the talented maker who sent me my beloved Anne of Green Gables project bag. The illustrated fabric perfectly captures Prince Edward Island in springtime with Anne and Diana and of course the house that Matthew and Aunt Marilla shared, Green Gables. All of the project bags are beautifully lined with coordinating fabric and have sturdy drawstrings at the top to keep all the crafting supplies neatly and securely tucked inside. One of my personal goals has been to put down my phone and pick up a book. That has been a relatively easy thing to do recently because I read a story that is going to stay with me for quite some time. A few months ago, one of the viewers of this channel sent me a book she had written. Nicole Allen wrote an autobiography of her life with her husband and 12 children. You heard that right, 12 children. The title is Mountains and a Mustard Seed, A Family's Journey of Hope. I won't spoil any of the plot, but I was hooked from the first page all the way to the very last. It's an incredible memoir of faith and family. It's simply a story about clinging to hope when that's all they had to hold on to. In a world that has been turned upside down for the past year and a half, this book was a reminder to me that everything is going to be okay, even when nothing looks that way. Whew. All right, let's start over. Mm. Okay, let me start that over. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to cry. Okay. In a world that has been turned upside down for the past year and a half, this book was a remind... Mm. <laughs> To get through this part okay in a world that has been turned upside down for the past year and a half this book was a reminder to me that everything is going to be okay even when nothing looks that way i will leave you with a quote from one of the wisest of all characters from literature winnie the pooh it's the first day of autumn a time of hot chocolatey mornings and toasty marshmallow evenings and best of all leaping into leaves happy fall dear friends